In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a neat proof for the sum identities for the sine and cosine functions. And what's cool is that once you know the sum identities for sine and cosine, you can derive the difference identities for sine and cosine as well as all of the sum and difference identities for the tangent and cotangent functions fairly easily just using some algebra. But in this video, we're going to look at how we prove how we can express sine of a sum of two angles in terms of sine and cosine of just those individual angles. So we want to express this sine of alpha plus beta in terms of just sines and cosines of alpha and beta alone. And we want to do the same for cosine of alpha plus beta. So to do that, we're going to be using this geometric construction here. And we have, we have several right triangles shown here. And here I should have drawn a box here as well. So we have, we have this right triangle here. Unfortunately, we don't know this point of intersection. H, H is this, H is this point here where segments HF and DE intersect. We have right triangle AGF. We have right triangle ADE, or I should say AED. And we have right triangle AFD. We also have right triangle D H F. But we're all we're ultimately interested in finding the sine of alpha plus beta and the cosine of alpha plus beta in terms of sines and cosines of alpha and beta alone. So alpha plus beta is this big angle here. The sine of, of alpha plus beta would be, well, this, this is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So if you remember from Soka Toa, opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be ED over AD. Okay. And the cosine of alpha plus beta is AE over AD, so adjacent over hypotenuse. AD, AE, excuse me, AE over AD. But remember, let's, let's look at sine alone for a moment. Remember this sine of alpha plus beta is, well, this A, it's A, it's ED over AD, so opposite over hypotenuse. But ED is the same as GF plus DH. So, sine of alpha plus beta so ed this ed equals is just a remark to the side ed equals gf gf plus dh remember these are parallel eh and gf are parallel and they're, they're of the same length because these are these are all right right angles here this is a right angle this angle here is a right angle so we have we have rectangles formed. So GF, these are on opposite sides of the rectangle, so they have to be the same length, right? GF and EH are the same length. So ED is EH plus DH or HD, but we can we can write that as GF, which is equivalent to EH plus DH. So 
ED is GF plus DH. So sine of alpha plus beta is then GF plus DH over AD. Okay, well, let's see what I'm going to cheat here and there, there's really two ways of doing this. First, I can uh, I I can I can separately compute. I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you what the answer is, right? Or no, 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 no I won't do that. Okay, so we have GF plus DH over AD. Okay, this is the same thing as GF over AD plus DH over AD. Now, the question we should be asking is, can we somehow convert either of these terms into a sine of or cosine of alpha or beta by multiplying by a special version of multiplying and dividing by a special version of one and it turns out that we can so what we're going to do is this first term here, this GF over AD, we're going to multiply it by AF over AF. That's the same thing as multiplying by 1. So erase this here. So GF over AD times AF over AF. Well, that's the same thing as we can reorder this and, and, and write that this is GF over AF times AF over AD. And the reason we can do that, this is this is basically equivalent to saying that this is GF times AF, all in the numerators. So this is this is equal to GF times AF over AD times AF. And we can we can switch the order around and like uh, so this is equivalent to GF times AF, we can, we can switch the order around in any way we want. So say we flip these, this is AF times AD. All right, and then we go ahead and split here. And this is e equivalent to GF over AF times AF over AD. And that's exactly what should be an A here. And that's exactly what we have here. So I'm just going to erase. Okay, so GF over AF. Well, what's that? GF over AF. Well, that's sine of alpha, right? We have the opposite over the hypotenuse. So this equals sine of alpha But then what's what's AF over AD? AF over AD. Well, that looks like it's cosine of beta, right? This is an adjacent here over the hypotenuse for angle beta. So this is cosine of beta. So that's that's this term here. We had multiplied and divided this term by AF. So we had GF over AD times AF over AF. That's the same thing as multiplying by 1, which we're allowed to do. 
reordered that as GF over AF times AF over AD, and we see that sine alpha times cosine of beta. This term, it turns out that it's advantageous if we multiply and divide it. That's the same thing as multiplying by 1 by df. So this term here, dh times ad, let's see what happens if we, you know, that's equivalent to saying dh or dh over ad times df over df. We can reorder this and say that this is equal to dh over df times df over ad. Well, dh over df, I, I forgot to, uh, forgot one important thing here. So HF and AG are parallel lines, right? They're parallel lines. This is a, AF is a transversal that cuts through these parallel lines. You remember from geometry, alternate, in, alternate interior angles are congruent. So if this is alpha, then this angle here also has to be alpha, right? So this angle here is alpha. Well, if this is alpha, if this is alpha, then this is a right triangle here. So if, if, if this is alpha, then this little angle here is, this little angle here is complementary to alpha. So if this is 90, then this plus this has to add up to 90. So this has to be 90 minus alpha, 90 degrees minus alpha. But remember this, when, you're lo when we're looking at, at this big right triangle here, okay, we don't know what, we, this, this point doesn't have a label. But when we're looking at this big right triangle here, this angle here and this angle are also complementary. These also add up to 90, right? So if this and this add up to 90, and alpha and this add up to 90, then this must also be alpha. Because this which is alpha, and this angle are complementary to the same angle, so this has to be alpha as well. So why did I bother mentioning that? Well, you'll see we're looking at dh over df. So this is a right triangle here, and this is alpha, so with respect to this angle, which is alpha, which we just found is alpha, dh over df. This is the hypotenuse and this is the adjacent side. So we have a cosine of alpha. dh over df is cosine of alpha. But what's df over ad? Well, with respect to beta, df is the opposite side and ad is the hypotenuse of this big right triangle here so df over ad is sine of beta okay so we have so far that gf over ad well, well we have gf over ad sine alpha times cosine of beta and what we just found D, dh over ad that's the same thing as multiplying by df over multiplying by df over df or you said another way multiplying and dividing by df it's the same thing as multiplying by 1 right when we do that we we get that dh over ad 
times 1 or times df over df is cosine of alpha times sine of beta. So that means this term here, this term here is cosine of alpha sine beta. This term here is sine of alpha cosine of beta. So it looks like we found we found the sine of alpha plus beta in terms of sines and cosines of alpha and beta. So sine of alpha plus beta you can erase the question mark because we now know what it is. It's sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus so that was from here sine of alpha cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha sine beta so plus cosine of alpha sine beta now what about cosine of alpha plus beta So to find cosine of alpha plus beta, we do something very similar to what we did for sine. So cosine of alpha plus beta, this is, this is alpha plus beta, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So EA or AE, doesn't really matter, over AD. But the way, if, if you remember for sine, we did was we realized this was D, D, E, or E, D over A, D, opposite over hypotenuse, and we split that up into an F, G, and a D, H, because F, G is congruent to segment E, H. So, likewise, we're going we're gonna to split this A, E, or E, A. This is the same thing as AG minus, minus this segment, EG over AD. But if you look here, EG is not really part of any triangle, so, but FH is, and it's equivalent to EG. These are four right angles so we have a rectangle here so FH and EG are going to be congruent so this is equivalent to AG minus FH over AD so that's AG over AD minus FH over AD. And like we did with the sign, we're going to multiply each of these terms by a special ver version of 1. One that will generate sines and cosines of alpha and beta. So let's look at this term first, AG over AD. So AG over AD, let's see. So we have AG is the adjacent side of this, this triangle here, this right triangle, AFG. AD is the hypotenuse of this triangle right here. AF is involved in both of those triangles. So let's see what happens if we multiply and divide by AF. So when we do that, we can rewrite this as AG over AF times AF over AD. AG over AF, well, alpha, with respect to alpha, we can see that AG is the 
adjacent side and uh, AF is, is the hypotenuse of this right triangle here so AG over AF is cosine of alpha what about AF over AD well, looking at triangle right triangle ADF all right AF or I should have said AFD because angle AFD is the right angle AF over AD amounts to dividing the adjacent side by the hypotenuse that's re with respect to beta so AF over AD is cosine of beta okay so we now know that AG over AD this term is cosine of alpha times cosine of beta so this term here is cosine of alpha times cosine of beta but what about this FH over AD well, FH over AD FH is looks like it's part of part of this right triangle here And AD, AD is, well, it's part of this right triangle, and it's also part of this right triangle, right? So, FH is part of this right triangle, right triangle, FHD, and AD is part of both right triangle AED as well as right triangle AFD. Let's say we're considering right triangle AFD. We see that DF is is part of right triangle AFD, but DF is also part of right triangle FHD. So let's see what happens if we multiply and divide FH over AD by DF. Remember that's equivalent to multiplying by 1. So we can rewrite this as FH over DF times DF over AD. Well, FH over DF, well, let's see what that is. FH over DF, remember this is alpha, so we are dealing with the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's sine of alpha. This, this is sine of alpha. Now, what about DF over AD? Well, with respect to beta, angle beta, DF is the opposite side and AD is the hypotenuse. We're dividing opposite by hypotenuse. So we have DF over AD is sine of beta. So AG over AD is cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. And FH over AD is sine of alpha times sine of beta. So this term here is sine of alpha times sine of beta. Put a circle around it so you don't so you don't get confused by the text above it. So AG over AD is cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, and FH over AD is sine of alpha, sine of beta. So what we have here is well, cosine of alpha plus beta. Remember this, this whole expression is equal to cosine of alpha plus beta because cosine of alpha plus beta is this EA over the hypotenuse AD. Remember, EA is the same thing as this big 
AG segment AG with EG subtracted off. EG is not part of any right triangle, so we we let EG be replaced by FH, which is part of a right triangle. Because FH is equivalent, is congruent to the segment EG. These four angles here are right angles. So we have a rectangle formed. Opposite sides are equivalent in length. So FH is e equivalent to EG in length. So we can replace EG with FH. So EA over AD can be written as AG minus FH over AD. And we can write both terms in the numerator over the denominator. So we have AG over AD minus FH over AD. And we computed these separately. Computed this by multiplying and dividing by AF. And we computed this by multiplying and dividing by DF. The first term is cosine of alpha times cosine of beta. And the second is sine of alpha times sine of beta. And we're subtracting the two. So we get that cosine of alpha plus beta. I can erase this question mark because we now know. We now know what it is. It is cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus, here, let me extend this over, minus sine of alpha times sine of beta. So we now know what the sine of alpha plus beta is in terms of cosines and sines of alpha and beta and we now know what the cosine of alpha plus beta is in terms of sines and cosines of alpha and beta and knowing this as I've shown in another video we can easily compute the sum and difference identities well, we can easily compute the difference identities for sine and cosine just by, you know, replacing beta with a negative beta. And knowing those, we can compute the sum and difference identities for tangent and cotangent by, by dividing by the, you know, so if we wanted to compute the sum identity for tangent, we'd divide sine of alpha plus beta by cosine of alpha plus beta, right? And so we can do that to compute the sum and difference identities for, and go through a process similar to that, to compute the sum and difference identities for tangent and cotangent. And I've, I've shown that in another video.